everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. I feel so emotional. It doesn't, I don't think it's going to matter how many times I see that video. It just makes me well up because this opportunity has changed my life so much. And I just want so many people to experience the same thing. Um, so I'm so honored to be here to talk about how I've implemented social media into my business. Um, and I just want to give you a little bit of background about me before I start. So I got introduced three years ago. And to start with, I thought, saw the compensation plan. I thought, wow, to find 12 people that think the same, same as me, this is going to be so easy. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> and... I hit executive quite quickly, but a year later I was really struggling and I was back down to provisional executive three and I was going to quit the opportunity. I went to um, a big event in London and there was still something in the back of my mind that was saying, you just need to give this one last go. And that's what I did. I went home and I started going to all events and doing all the other things that we're told to do in the business, but I started utilizing social media. Social media was a really easy fit for me because I am a shy person and standing up here is way out of my comfort zone, as is going up to talk to random people about the opportunity that I don't know. So social media was a great fit for me. Also, I'd moved areas to be with my partner. So I'd moved away from my hometown. I didn't know anyone. But um, I started sharing positive things that we were doing. So if we ate out somewhere nice, or if we went on a nice holiday, or if I was working somewhere nice and sunny instead of being stuck in an office, I would share that. And I found that that was a huge, huge, huge tool for me, and that people were actually reaching out to me to ask me what I did. And by doing that, it just sped up the process of growing the business, and within 15 months, I'd hit that Blue Diamond pin title. So... Social media is huge, absolutely huge, and that is the power of it. Social media is so powerful, and people form their impression of you within the first seven seconds. So when you walk into a room somewhere, people make a judgment, rightly or wrongly, immediately on you. So if we go for a job interview or we're going to a wedding or to something social, we make a an impression and we, we make an effort with what we're wearing um, to form that right judgment that we want to get across to people. And it's exactly the same with what we're doing on social media. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is what does your social media say about you? And the first of all, the first thing to talk about is our profile pictures. So we have things that really work and then things that don't work. And when we did a little bit of this presentation in the UK, I know a lot of people changed their profile pictures after they <laughs> heard about this. So that is my profile picture on the right-hand side. So you can see it's a smiley photo of, of myself. People often buy into people before they've bought into the opportunity. So people buy into you before they even know what the opportunity is about. They form that judgment of whether they want to par even partner with you when they, even before they even know about what, what the business is. So a smiley photo of you is attractive, draws people in, and that is powerful. What we don't want to see is any pictures of your pets. And I'm a mum as well, but we also don't want to see pictures of your kids. So just keep that in mind. Cover photos. Also, the first thing that you see on Facebook is your cover photo. And this is actually the only part of Facebook where you can't hide. So... On your profile picture, if you just want people to see your most recent profile picture, you can hide all the other ones that you've had. You can't scroll through them. However, with your cover photos, you can scroll through all of them. And believe me, people will. If people are watching you and watching about your business and potentially thinking of joining, but they're still sat on the fence and not really sure, people stalk you and they go through all of your social media so they will be flipping through all of your cover photo as well so make sure again it's something positive and something powerful obviously I've chosen because you're a, a sky full of stars because it, it's all about creating ruby stars so I thought that was perfect for this business your bio as well so 
On Facebook, Instagram, also Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever platform you're using, you can have a bio. So you can see Hazel's on Facebook there, and you can see mine on Instagram. We've made it so simple for our audience. People know that we have an opportunity. They know that we have a, a business. We've not confused anybody. It's very clear to see from our, bi our bios. So that is also something you want to think about. When people click onto your social media, obviously we want to see a nice smiling profile picture, but what reaches out to people and what grabs their attention? What can they see that they're going to be looking for things about you? And if you make it very simple for them and put the content in your bio, it makes things a lot more simple. So a massive part of my business, as I said earlier, was to do with attraction marketing. I didn't even know that I was doing attraction marketing when I was posting all these positive things on Facebook about what I was doing. But people started reaching out to me. So you'll see here, they're just scrolling through um, some screenshots from my, mine and Hazel's social media. And I'm just going to talk you through a few of them. So... You will see a couple where we're working from home, both of us. I think there's one where I've got my laptop in bed and I've said, I'm feeling poorly today, but I'm still able to work my business from home. Well, how many people would see that that's stuck in an office, maybe not feeling great, but they've had to power on through and get in that office or they've had to take a day sick? And they're like, what on earth can she be doing where she's ill, but she's still getting to work and make money from her bed? That is attractive to people. There's one of Hazel where she's flying premium for the first time. I know that so many people <laughs> saw that and it caught their attention because you're thinking, what on earth is that girl doing? She posts from home all the time about this business that she's working with her child, but she's able to fly premium. I want to fly premium, so I want to know what she's doing. So powerful. Any post, if you're a mom, any post that you can do where you can show you're working, but also have your children there is so powerful because that is the ultimate freedom. If you can work a business and have your child with you, so powerful. Um, there's also the one that we had, I like to show anywhere where I'm working outdoors and in the sun that, or at home. Um, but there's also one where we went on our success trip to Miami. Obviously our amazing trips that we go on. And um, when we got to the room, we had loads of products there. So we just laid out the products on the bed. And I was like completely blown away by the company that I'm partnered with. Not only have I been flown here with my partner to experience this amazing holiday, but look at all these treats that we've found in our room. I mean, there's people sat there thinking, oh, well, my work that I do doesn't reward me with a holiday and loads of products. That is attractive. None of these posts say at all, join my business, or they're not recruiting posts in any way. But people are reaching out, they're liking, commenting, watching, and importantly, inboxing to find out what we do. And that is so powerful. So start sharing what you do um, every day and see how you can start attracting people into your business. So I have some top tips for attraction marketing that I wanted to share with you. So I think number one that I'm going to cover is be real and be you. I absolutely hate it when I see that somebody has done a post and then it's shared or got just copy and pasted about 50 times on social media. It's not them. People can see through you, your post if it's not you because it's not worded quite like you or it's not quite what you would say. So be inspired by people's posts if they're successful with them, but don't imitate them. Still be you. It's so important. And if you have got a social media platform already and you're just build, starting to build the business, don't suddenly change because you want to utilize social media into the business. You, you need to be you. It's so important. And you'll hear that a lot throughout all the speakers today is that I think the main theme is to be real and be you. Um, no negativity. So as I've said a few times, I was sharing positive posts. You can so easily ruin your social media if you have a bad day and suddenly you have, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, but an outburst on um, social media about your bad day. So somebody's really annoyed you or cut you up on the way home from work and you have an outburst on social media. It's not attractive and you can really quickly ruin your social media that you've built up with all your positive posts by one negative outburst. 
So I know that me and Hazel always joke that if we have a bad day, because we do, we're real people, that Alex and Dan just get it in the ear instead. So find someone to moan to <laughs> and um, just keep it off social media. Um, celebrate success. And this is so key for me because I think that, and I'm pretty sure that most people in the room will identify with this, sometimes when we're building this business and we start having success or... You know, we're absolutely so passionate about it and we share this. We can have friends and family that are so negative about it. Oh, why are you wasting your time with that? Why, you know, so many negative comments. But, and I really used to hold back with celebrating my success, but I don't anymore. And it might mean that I've lost a few friends and family through that. But what I always think is that if you're proud of what you're doing and you're proud of being in this industry, which we all should be, and you're proud of helping other people, we want to celebrate that. And if people around you that are close, supposedly close to you can't be happy for you, are they the right people that you want to surround yourself with? Because we are an average of the five people that we spend the most time with. And um, if they're negative people that can't be happy for your success, then I say you let them go. And finally... I'm not going to cover share, not sell, because I know Hazel focuses on that quite a lot when she speaks, so we're not going to cover that. But finally, what I'd just like to say is, before you post out anything on social media, have a good look at what you're just about to send. And just think, would I be attracted to that? Is that would that intrigue me to send an inbox to find out what they're doing? Or even just press like, would I like that post? If the answer is no, then we don't post it and we, we redo it. So I get asked all the time, how do I use social media to invite? So this is a way of inviting on your social media without inboxing people. So I've just picked three posts that I really like. On the right-hand side, and I'll read it out for the people at the back, I've got an image because I, I always think that most of your posts should have images because it's, it draws the eye in, it's eye-catching, it intrigues people. People buy with their eyes, so I always like to use an image. But I've just put, today I'm connecting with mums from all around the world, showing how I built up a large online business throughout my pregnancy and now around family life. If you're a mum or mum-to-be would, and would like to work from home, have more time, more finances, and more opportunity to travel, then message me for more details. So I'm not, you know, sending loads of messages to mums-to-be on social media. I'm just putting that out there for mums to know that they can message me if they would like to find out more about what I'm doing. The one in the middle, I think that's one that Hazel shared. So the age range that we're talking about, like millennials, spend four hours a day on social media scrolling through. So four hours a day where you, they could potentially, or anybody could be making money. So that's why we put stop scrolling and start doing what an opportunity for, for those people that already spend four hours a day on social media to utilize that to make some money. And the one on the end, one of the top benefits of working from home is flexibility. So we're asking, would anybody like to earn an extra income and just putting that out there? Who do you know if you went over to someone and you said, would you like to earn an extra income? They'd say, no, actually, I'm okay. Nobody, everyone wants to earn some more money. And that is what we're just putting out there on social media. So once you have got the um, person hooked in and maybe they've messaged you to ask what it is that you do, it is so key that you don't ruin it at this stage. Because if we're going to build the business face-to-face, which so many people do, it's all about building relationships. And it's exactly the same on social media. We are a people business. We're finding out what people need, what they want. And it is so key to build relationships still. So if someone reaches out to me and says, oh, I've just seen your post, I would love to know what it is that you do. I never, ever launch straight into, well, this is what I do, and send them all the details. I ask relationship-building questions like, where is it that you're based? What actually is it that you currently do work-wise? Things where I can find out what their needs are, what they might potentially want from this opportunity, and to make somebody feel actually valued and not like you're just going to try and 
hook them in for the business and they're a number. It's about making people feel like they're wor worthy of something. And so it's, it's all about creating those key relationships. So no spamming. We're not sending out really long scripted messages on social media, just hundreds and hundreds a day. That is not what we're doing, and that is not what we're saying for anybody to do. We're keeping it really simple. So if we send out messages on social media, whatever you can see on the screen of your phone when you look at it is how long a message should be to somebody. Once someone has to start scrolling through loads and loads of text, they just turn off from it. They don't want to read it all. You, you miss them. So we want to um, keep things as simple as we can for our audience and who's connecting with us. That was my last slide. I was just checking. <laughs> but I just hope that has given you an insight into what we do on social media and it's been useful. And also um, attraction marketing, inviting, and and just showing you how quickly you can speed things up building your business this way. So yes, we can go out and we can do all the face-to-face -face stuff, but how many people can we connect to? And maybe just it's limited to our hometown or where we are that particular day. This way we can connect with so many more people so quicker from all around the world and build a really strong business. So I hope that's been useful. Thank you.